show you guys before I mail one away what I do to it main thing is I want to look at the exhaust port on this talk about what I did to the exhaust port what I didn't do and let's look at the piston the rings and let's look at the plating what does the plating look like and is it breaking in what is breaking and I figured this is the perfect saw to do it with because we built this saw together on the channel you guys know the deal with this this saw has four or five tanks through it, so it's uh, it's got some time on it. Not a ton of time, but it's breaking in. Okay, so the main thing to know when your saw breaks in, you'll feel it. It'll just get stronger and stronger, and then one day it'll be like, wow. Um, what you're doing when you're breaking in a saw, um, yeah, you're wearing in the bearings and stuff like that, but the main thing is you are filing the ring to the cylinder wall. A used set of rings will be sharp. You could cut your finger with them. A new set of rings will be rounded. Um, as the rings break in, you will get less blow by because what will happen when you're running the saw on the upstroke, you will bleed some of that compression back into the bottom end when you're actually breaking in a saw. So that's one of the reasons why you want to run the saw rich so that you have more fuel and air going into the bottom end because you're going to get some of that blow by. The byproduct of that blow by, you don't make as much power because some of your compression is actually going back through into the bottom end. Um, the saw may need a little more fuel upon startup, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You'll feel it. A brand new build will not pop like that. Okay? So this thing will pop more once it gets more time on it. Okay? Like this. I hope you guys can hear this. Okay? You hear the difference in sound? It's more of a sharp thump thump. Listen to this. Okay, so same thing. This one, this saw's got tons of time on it. Here, let's see. Listen. It's more of a it's a different sound, okay? So as you break in your saw, you will get more compression. The rings will file in and they'll seat. Okay, so that's what you're doing. Let's take a look at this exhaust port, go over the screws on this and just kind of see what it's doing. I don't foresee any issues. The saw runs really good, but let's have a look. When you port cylinders, sometimes you'll have one that the exhaust port doesn't look very good after you run it. You don't want that to be normal, but it does happen, friends. So let's have a look at this and just see what it looks like. Okay, here's our saw. Let's pull the side cover off. Okay, these things often have a busted clutch spring. This one's good, but this is stuff you want to check if you buy one of these. Let's put the light on. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to blow all this out and clean it up. I'll do that off video. Um, I just use an air gun. Again, how's our clutch? Doesn't look like anything got hot. It's not discolored. Okay, this has the modern three spring clutch. These are the best clutches for these. Um, these only fit on the newer saws. The John Threads, the 272s and 268s will take these. The older... 162, 61s, and 266s will not. The thread is different. Okay? No oil leaking from here. Okay? So, I'm happy with that side. Okay, recoil. Okay, I put a new rope in this, so that's all good. 
make sure these screws are all tight you know what i love about these old huskies the screws are actually indexed look they're all exactly the same that really helps with my ocd brain <laughs> i like things to match i know it's funny okay i'm gonna take the top cover off let's see let's see what we got here that reminds me i gotta check this screw is mismatched i want to see if i have a matching screw to this age of saw let me I'll look through my parts bins, put that on my list, just like that. Okay, so this isn't too bad, it's pretty clean under there. I did clean all this when we originally did the saw. That's cool, eh? 300th anniversary, that's an old company. This saw is nice. Okay, now look how clean this thing is. You can tell it's a new build. We've, uh, We've done everything and anything that we can to this saw. Now, this probably won't be a good indication of state of tune because I just fired this saw up. But let's have a look, see. I just had to blow around there. There's some dust on there. No, you can't really tell, so. If you want to do a piston inspection, it's nice to, or a, a spark plug inspection, it's nice to do it after you've run the saw. I can tell though that that was golden brown. You can kind of see the electrode there. So we're good with that. I will leave that out. Now, this is, I know you guys want to know about this stuff. I get a lot of emails. I haven't been answering emails as much as I used to um, with what's going on and that, just trying to be with the family. Try and get to as many as I can every day, but it's uh, it's a logistics thing. But keep emailing, guys. I'll try and I try and answer as many as I can. Um, I've had a lot of saw build requests. I'm still not taking saw builds, friends. Hey, make sure your gasket's good. Uh, I gotta figure out my new schedule and make sure I can get everything done at home before I add anything else to it. Okay, nice thing is, you guys heard that saw run, look how nice and rich it runs upon startup. You guys can see moisture in there. Okay, so there's our crazy little pipe. This thing works phenomenally and it's light. This is lighter than the stock pipe. Okay, I'm just gonna grab some paper towel here. And I'm just gonna start the cleaning process. The saw is pretty clean though still, so. Okay. Let's try and get everything off of here. Let's look at the exhaust port on this. Okay. Hold on friends, I gotta reposition. Okay. There you go. Now, the discoloration and things, that's fuel, okay? You see how shiny that is? Now look, there's fine, and I mean the finest little marks on there. That is completely normal on a new build, friends. Completely normal. Now, I'm going to fire up the scope and really show you guys what's going on in here. Notice though, exhaust port, everything looks good. It is kind of wet because I just fired this saw up. Let's see if I can get you a better view of that. Yeah, and I get asked this all the time, friends, about braking, so. Okay, I shined up this exhaust port. I didn't do a lot of work to this, friends. The exhaust roof height was exactly where I wanted it to be for this build, so I didn't touch it. Remember that, friends, you don't have to port every port to make a saw that runs. So, um, I know when you first start, you want to grind on everything, but less is more, I find, with these saws. Okay, I'm going to fire up the scope. Let's look at the top of the piston, see what that looks like. See what we can see in the cylinder from the top here. And then let's look at the front of it through the scope. Okay, friends, here's a look through the spark plug hole. That's the exhaust port there, left transfer and right transfer. 
Now I'm just repositioning here. Sometimes it's a little fumbly with the scope. Just showing you guys there's the spark plug hole. I'm just looking at the exhaust port. There's no scratches, no chips, nothing going on with the plating. So that's, that's good. I'm trying to get you guys a better shot. Notice the swirling. That is the crosshatch from the factory. So the hone pattern is still on the cylinder. It's not 100% broken in yet. It'll take about a while until that's completely gone. Notice at bottom dead center, the piston completely goes down below the transfer. So we're getting good flow at bottom dead center. Now I'm showing you the V shape. That's the wash pattern on top of the piston from the transfers. And here's a look through the exhaust port. That uh, that gray stuff you see on the cylinder, that's actually fuel, friends. If you look into your cylinder and see that, that's not damage to the plating. That's just fuel. You'll notice it changes when I pull it back over again. Now, again, I'm just showing you. Notice how the plating is shiny. And uh, it's starting to, to shine up, which means it's starting to break in. Notice no scratches on the piston. Nothing going on with the rings. Just everything looks good. There's a few little fine marks on the piston. I'm pulling you back out here so you guys can see. Nothing too untoward. This is completely normal during braking. You'll get those fine little marks. You get that with a new saw too. Um, usually after, you know, 8, 10 tanks, the piston's just shiny. That's everything just bedding in. So there you guys go. That's what a cylinder should look like with four or five tanks on it. That's normal braking. Okay, friends. Well, <laughs> big. there's a big noodle stuck underneath here, under the hood. But Okay, friends. So the other thing I do, look at the fuel line. Make sure it's not leaking or is showing any signs of anything. This one seems fine. And uh, I replaced every part of the saw, but I'm just showing you guys what I do. Air filter's fine. This has the uh, 272 style air filter, much better. Same filter as a uh, early 394. I've never seen one with this. It's a paper filter. Um, it's a good filter though. It really, really seals well and keeps the chips out of your saw. So that is a bonus to the 268 over the 266 so okay just make sure everything's good nothing's loose none of the screws are are, uh, are loose or giving me any thoughts of them being loose you can also go down and check your 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 cylinder uh, bolts now I've done all that previously on this saw so um, that's about it now once again I'll reiterate you see how the piston looks fine? It's got a few little fine little marks on it. That's completely normal for any saw that's new, let alone ported. Um, when you're breaking a saw in, there's little microscopic imperfections that you're taking off um, as you break the saw in. So, um, and I'll reiterate, you guys can see, you see those lines going around and around and around? That is cross hatching. This saw is not fully broken in. Also, you can see the ring, and it's, it was hard to show, but I tried to get the shot for you guys. The ring has a slight, you can just see a slight curvature. I couldn't get the shot for you. Um, the, scope, the scope just doesn't have that capability. When the ring's fully filed in, it'll be completely flat, and it'll be sharp on both edges. So that'll happen about the time that the cross hatching is gone. And then... You'll just pull this thing over one day and it'll have way more compression and that'll be it. It'll be done. So, um, I just wanted to show you guys that whether the saw is ported or a new top end, that's how it should look in my opinion. I see nothing. Always check the tops of your ports. Make sure there's no plating, pla uh, plating flaking there. If, if you're going to chip plating or pull it off, generally, not always, sometimes it'll happen in weird places. If you're going to pull plating off of a cylinder, that's where it would typically occur. I see nothing on this saw. So also the wash pattern. Um, you see, you can see these weird swirls. That's the wash from the transfers and they are identical. That's what you want to see that creates efficiency when both transfers fill the combustion chamber at the same rate 
You want them to open at the same time and you want them to do that nice swirl. They come back and around to the intake and then start to head towards the exhaust. At that point, as some of it starts leaving, the exhaust port closes and boom, it fires and you start the cycle again. So there's a lot of little tricks to making a saw run good, but uh, you'll learn those as you go. Anyhow, friends, um, I think we're good to go. This saw has been an absolute pleasure to work with. The only issue I had with this saw, when I went to restart it after building it, I had no spark. Um, I don't know what happened there. Um, I can't remember if I checked this saw for spark at the beginning, but it had no spark. So um, I had I had a good coil on a 272 that I have here. So I did the switch and put the 272 coil on this. Um, this saw is so nice that I figured it deserves an OEM coil that works good. So um, other than that, this thing's been smooth sailing. So there you guys go. I hope that helps you see what a saw looks like it breaking remember origin uh, initially as those rings are leaking you will get a little bit of brown underneath the ring because that's that is uh exhaust pushing past the ring okay so you will get some leakage sometimes that's nothing to be worried about you will get f minor imperfections scratches up and down and that is just the the two surfaces getting to know each other they're fine, and I mean thinner than the width of a hair. Don't worry about those. Make sure the plating's not coming off. But other than that, friends, that's it. Sometimes you'll get little marks on the piston crown. Um, I typically don't get those anymore because I actually go around the radius and I smooth all those right angles. So that was something I learned uh, early on to do that. And then I don't get those little marks on the where the crown where the crown meets the wall of the piston. So. I'm happy. There's not much left to do on this. I'll uh, I'll give it a good bath, clean it up, box it, and send it away. Anyhow, friends, hope you guys learned something, and uh, thanks for coming back. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and the and the bell. Uh, the bell. If you hit all on the bell, uh, you will get a notification every time I post a video. And uh, just thanks for being here. I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. Thank you.